Hello, my name is Susan McCrispin, and I'm standing right in front of the First Presbyterian Church of Alexander City, Alabama. And it's a beautiful, blustery day. We've had a little bit of rain. We've had rain patches all this week, but um, it's a lovely place, and you'll hear some traffic noise, but that's just the good life in Alexander City, Alabama. When I think of this weather and the rain and the thunder rolling in, I just love the way God uses that to show His greatness and also wash things clean, to wash the dirt away and smell and make everything smell so fresh. So when you're stuck at home and we don't get to see each other so much, and we have these rainy days, I hope you can cherish them because God, He does that for us too. If we let Him, He will wash us clean and make us anew and take our worries away. And I hope you can take a moment and let God refresh you. Praise His name. It's one of my favorite times to walk. I have uh, added into the video service. I'll just stop a minute here instead of walking. I've added into the video service another uh, rendition by Seth Fuller of Eternal Father Strong to Say. Uh, we did one last week with Robert, uh, Robert Lamborn singing the solo. It was a great version. A very good arrangement, but Seth had recorded earlier, a few couple of months ago, another version that I thought was uh, worthy, certainly, to share with you on the program today. So, God bless. I hope that it does bless you. It's a beautiful piece. He does a wonderful job. He blesses us every time he plays, and I'm on my way. Enjoy. Jesus said, when you pray, say, Father, let your name be held sacred. Let your kingdom come. Keep giving to us the bread we need day by day. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. Do not bring us into temptation. He said, which of you has a friend will go to him at midnight and say, friend, Lend me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine arrived at my house on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. 
and he will answer in his own thoughts, stop bothering me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot give up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything, even if he is a friend, he will do it because of his friend's persistence. I tell you, keep on asking and it will be given to you. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead give him a snake? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What happens in this passage is that a friend shows up in the middle of the night knocking at the door. In Jesus' day, people liked to travel at night but to avoid the heat. So put yourself in ancient days. A friend in the neighborhood calls out to wake you up. And you hear him through the small opening, uh, which is a window in your house. And in the Near East, your neighbor wakes you up because someone showed up at his house to stay with him, which means in the Near East, you feed them. They've been on a long journey. Now, it was unheard of to deny a visitor that kind of hospitality. To ignore this um, social requirement, uh, it was a crime of neglect, a stain on one's honor and reputation. I visited the home of a, a couple I knew from Honduras, and I was offered a, a plate of Honduran burritos, and uh, I was on a strict diet at the time, so I politely declined, and the couple looked surprised and disturbed. And the husband, Jorge, he reached out and pulled on my arm. He pulled me into another room. And he stared at me with disapproval. And he said quietly, but sternly, one does not refuse an offer of food from the mujer de casa, the lady of the house. Now, señor, este no es bueno. It is, this is not good. You have embarrassed us, but I will teach you. You must apologize to señora and eat and tell her that you love it. Well, in the Near East, it was not unusual to have a guest drop in, requiring you to go to house to house, even in the middle of the night, and ask for a loan of bread or dried figs, beans or wine, poultry, eggs, dried fish. And in one sense, a guest of one house was the guest of the whole community. It had to do with the reputation of hospitality for the whole village. That was what was at stake. Back in the 1920s, there was a missionary in Jordan who was invited to a meal in his village. And when he sat down to eat, he saw that he was eating from a plate that came from his own kitchen. His wife had loaned it to the host for the dinner. The host had gone around the community to borrow food and good plates and glasses. He borrowed the plate from the missionary's wife. The man in Jesus' story asked for three loaves of bread, uh, which the ancient reader of this gospel understood that he was asking for bread and bowls and sauces. When, uh, when one ate bread back then, it, it was dipped in various dishes of, soft, of uh, sauces and other soft foods like hummus. You want to know what is the point 
of this story that Jesus is telling. Jesus starts off by asking this question. Which one of you would do this? And then he tells the story. It's as if he says, listen to my story and tell me what you would do. And this, what you may not know is this is a common phrase that always expects a, a negative answer. Which one of you would? And the answer is expected to always be, oh, not me. No, you won't catch me doing that. The, the answer that Jesus expects is, oh, no, I would never do that. That would never happen here. Who of you, if a friend asked you for help, would say, stop bothering me? Never, never would I do that. That would never happen. Not with me, not in my village. No one denies a guest hospitality. Verse 8, I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him anything just because he is his friend. He will do it because of his friend's persistence. Persistence, that's the English word that's been translated, but the King James uh, Version uses a, a better word. It uses importunity. Because of your friend's importunity, you will get up and help him in the middle of the night. You may not do it because he's your friend, but you'll do it because of his importunity. Literally, he's rude and shameless and pestering. Rude, shameless pestering. That's going to get him what he wants. Now, this is about your prayers. We're in the school of Jesus, and the disciple has just asked him, teach us how to pray. And he starts off by saying, we'll address God as your father. Use language of the family. That was last week. Now, he says, the homeowner gets up at midnight to answer his friend's request, not because he's his friend, but because of his importunity. Yeah, so what? Our prayers should contain an element of importunity, a word that contains a mixture of the idea of persistence and impudence. Is that what he's saying? But in this case, you know, the reason that translators translate this word into English by saying persistence is because of the picture that Jesus is painting of how we ought to pray, how he prays. And the picture is, is one that you, you have to imagine. It's a family setting. Imagine a child sitting on her father's loving knee saying, Father, here's what I want. Would you please give it to me? This is what I think I need. Could you do this for me? How can a four-year-old daughter who comes to you and is relentless in asking you for a favor and will not give up and hounds you for what she wants, how can you, how can you call that impudence? You don't take it as impudence. Not from your little daughter. You're gracious and you consider it. You love her. Jesus' story is encouragement for all of us to pray to our Father persistently. Even if you think you're wearing out God's patience, what you're going to find is a willing God, a loving and patient God. That's what you're going to find. I turn over to Luke 18.1. Jesus told this parable. It's another parable. Jesus told this parable to teach his disciples that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge who did not care about people. A widow came to him repeatedly saying, I want you to rule favorably in my case. The judge ignored her. 
But finally he said, you know, I don't care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to help her because she's wearing me out with her constant requests. So we have two parables from Jesus that say the same thing. A woman pesters a judge, the judge who thinks to himself that she's a pest. And a man pesters his friend at midnight. A a man uh, who goes to a friend at midnight, the friend thinks to himself, oh boy, he's a pest. But they don't say it. They don't say it out loud. You're a pest. You're pestering me. No. What do they do? They answer the request. They help. They help the person. The man in his bed trying to sleep thinks secretly, Oh, I wish you would stop pestering me. Why do I have to get up? The judge who wants to be left alone thinks secretly, Oh, don't you know I don't care about you? These men in these parables are there for a purpose. They are there to show us what God is not like. They show us that God does not think like that. That's why they're in the parable that way. God does not feel that way about you. Now that's that's the point of the parable, so don't misread it. If the man who wants to get some sleep is not God then, and the judge who does not care about people is not God then, who are uh, the pestering people who are asking them for help? Well, they are the believers who pray to the Father. If those men being evil compared to God's perfect righteousness... If those men being evil help a neighbor and help a widow, how much more will God help? Jesus prayed to God. Jesus cried out to God. He brought his prayers to God again and again until he had an answer. One way or the other, yes or no. And look at all the prayers of the Bible, how people were persistent with God, how they reasoned with God, argued with God, carefully challenged God to remember his promises. It's everywhere in the Bible. People did not give up. They reminded God, Lord, you have a reputation to uphold. They said your name and your honor will be harmed if you don't answer my prayer. It sounds like pressuring God. Well, people in the Bible prayed that way. It's not pressure. I mean, God is a father who is in love with his children. You may think Presbyterians, eh, we don't plead and cry out to God. Well, I hope you're not too good to bend the knee of your heart and make pleas to your father. Whatever it is that you have on your heart, your heart today. I hope that you will be as unsophisticated as the believers in the Bible. Because God does not think you are a pest. The point of the story is that he is not like that at all. Jesus is telling us God is not like the man who finds his neighbor to be a nuisance. God is not like the judge who doesn't care about people. God's nothing like these two men. When you ask him for help, he does not say to himself, oh, oh, it's her again. I wish she would leave me alone. Doesn't she know that I have some serious matters to deal with? Trouble in the Middle East. There's a pandemic going on. There's government corruption in Argentina. And I have six world leaders who want to be Hitlers. And you want three loaves of bread? Leave me alone. Jesus' point 
God is not like that. God is the God of 2 Kings 20. Hezekiah was deathly ill, and Isaiah went to him and said, Thus saith the Lord, a prophecy, set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. Hezekiah turned, to his, turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. Before Isaiah left the courtyard of the king's house, a message came to him from the Lord. Go back. Tell Hezekiah, I heard him pray. Tell him that I saw his tears and I changed my mind. I will heal him. So let God see your fears and your tears. Be shameless and persistent. Be like Jesus and like the believers in the Bible. The kind of people who pray and they don't give up. You think you bother God by bringing the trivial details of your life to Him? Or that you bother God because you keep on praying about little things? That's what He wants. And if you think that, if you think you're bothering Him, then you just look at verse 9. Jesus says, keep on asking and it will be given to you. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and it will be opened unto you. For whoever asks, receives, and the one who seeks, finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Finally, I leave you with this thought. Don't forget that this whole story happened at midnight. So you might say, God is your friend in every midnight of the soul that you experience. Every burden you bear. Every worry. Every pain. Let's pray. Our Father, hear our prayer. Answer our prayer. In the darkest hour of the night, help us, please. Please, Father. Amen. Thank you for spending time with us today on another video service and hopefully very soon we'll be back in our lovely church. In the meantime, we sure would appreciate your tithes and offerings sent to the First Presbyterian Church, P.O. Box 96, Alex City, Alabama 35011. And thank you so much and I hope to see you very soon.